this, then we're going to be looking at the undo features, copy and paste features, because there are a lot and there are some special ones in here that are just confusing. And then we also have, we're going to be looking at the snap, select, zoom, and these controls down here. So let's jump into it. First, you are going to click the scissor icon. You may notice that your paste options may not be what my paste options are. You might They might be grayed out. And the reason is you don't have anything selected to paste. So first, make a selection and then just double click and drag and then hit control C. And now those options should be available because now you can paste something. So let's start at the top. Say so I have undo, and if you undo something, if you click again, you'll actually have a redo button. And you'll notice that control Z just toggles between that. So control Z will undo and redo a function. So really cool. If we hit this undo icon, it'll do the same thing. If you want to do multiple undos, you hit control alt Z, it will allow you to do multiple. And if you right click, you'll bring up your undo history where you can undo multiple things in just one simple click. Bam, there we are, undo. If you want to redo them, just move back down. You can tell what stage you're at by the bold text. You see it's in bold, indicating that that's where we're at. So that's what happens there. You can also get to your undo history in here. So that's how you do that. Now we have these undo mix envelope and undo mix spectral. So we have this all purpose envelope. It's a little confusing, but it does some things that are specific to it. And the way you get to this all-purpose envelope, if you didn't see, is you click this little icon down here. We actually have a bunch of envelopes down here. The ones we're concerned with right now are the all-purpose and the waveform. So we are able to undo moves relative to that guy. And this is a this is also relative to the all-purpose envelope, but this is when you use it to do equalizing. So you can actually equalize something with this. And this would give you the functions to undo that. And this will give you functions to undo the way you mix things. We will look at the, with the envelope. We'll look at these a little bit, but I don't really ever use them. So I wouldn't worry too much about them. You could pretty much undo whatever you need to. Uh, disable undo for large samples, save your CPU resources. We have cut and copy, which are cut and copy, like the, exactly what they do in every other program. We have paste. And so these paste options where we get like additional things that are a little strange so first off we have paste insert so this is going to take our selection and it's going to insert the data so you notice how we almost were pasting what we copied so it just shifted the data over it did not delete the data as you can see next up we have the ability to paste replace and that didn't do anything because we're on top of the data but if we make our selection longer we're able to paste and replace and that deletes data with the new data that we have selected. So that's pretty cool. Now we have these paste mix envelope. So now we're going to dive into this guy right here for a second. So we have the ability to paste it a, uh, according to our setting that we give here. So this axis, the x-axis represents the time. The y-axis represents the amount of pasting that takes place. So we have this paste mix. Let's talk about that real quick. I believe I, if I didn't talk about it, paste mix, what it does. No, I didn't talk about it. Paste mix, what it does is instead of deleting the data or inserting the data, it will paste over. So it's like you're layering samples essentially. So if we do paste mix, you see that we have two of these. Let's go over here to somewhere else. that's a little stranger. Let's paste it right there. We'll do paste mix. And you see it's pasted the data that we had selected over the already existing data. So that's what paste mix does. What paste mix envelope does is it will paste our mix but according to let's let's select right here so if we set an all-purpose envelope right here and we say paste the mix there don't paste anything right here and then paste some right here and now we do paste mix envelope it will paste it according to our settings you can see here that it looks way different than it did before and that's because of the setting we've given here According to, you got to keep in mind what you've also copied. And you see that because we've made a change, it actually shows the imprint of the envelope on top of the, on top of the display. So that's something you need to know about. If you have a lot of points, you can click this pencil icon and just right click and drag to delete the points. So that's pretty handy. Okay, so that's that. Now this next one is paste mix spectral. And it's paste mix spectral, what it has to do with is if you use the all purpose envelope, you can use it to affect it with an EQ using an EQ tool. I'm not going to, I like never use this. So you can mess with it if you want, but I'm not going to bother with it just because I don't think it's a feature you're going to use. 
But if you want to, you can apply an EQ using the all-purpose envelope, and then this would allow you to paste that setting over. So we have a paste stretch. This one will allow you to stretch. So if we, so we've copied something to our clipboard, we're gonna paste it now. But now we have this paste stretch option, and we have time multiplier. We have different methods. We're also able to, pretty cool. We're able to preserve our formants, and all these are just controls that allow you to alter the formant preserva preservation. And what you do is you would change this. Like say we say, oh, factor cores, fine tuning, whatever, fine preservation. This is something where I just. I just change the settings until I get something that I like, and then I preview it. So that's our our sound. We could now uh, that's because we have time multiplication on. We could make the percentage a lot shorter, and it becomes a much faster sound. And we could like preserve the formants and use a different order to do that. Which order is almost always a reference to some sort of series of filters that's used to preserve the thing. You'll, you'll find these order filters. Um, inside a, a similar deal inside a vocoder sort of deal. They're trying to isolate those frequencies so that they can independently process and stretch them. So basically this, this will control the way you stretch the fundamental in a sense. It will still move everything, but the formant preservation, if you turn these options on, they will preserve the formants from the processing of the fundamental. That's all you really need to know about the process to be able to use it creatively. Anyways, you can hit preview before you commit to a decision. And then, yeah, if you change your mind, just click this little X and don't do anything there. All right, so that's what that does. And then we also have this paste replace drum. And this will bring up another stretching menu, but this stretching menu will stretch it. So whenever you chop something up, the tail end of that chop will suffer, right? Because you just chopped it. So in order to leave the chop, the tail end there, they have this stretching mechanism, which is meant to, uh, it's meant to help get the tail back on your sample. And so what we can do is we can do similar stretching methods as we just saw with the multiplication and give it a length and all this stuff. But we also have insert and auto slice. So it'll slice it and then insert tails. It's this stuff basically just has to do with how it separates the tail from the transient. And then the way it replaces the tail is given by the method here. So we have stretch, pogo, and none. If we do stretch and then we preview it, that's what we have. But if we go echo grace, you see how it's changing the tail end of the sample? And then random presence, I don't know why they don't just write random stereo but it basically randomizes the stereo image at the end, at the tail end of the sample. And you can also loop it. This will create a noticeable impact on the transient at the beginning of the sound. So you hear the loop happening. So you might not want that. And then the tail envelope, you're able to change the, the tail envelope, the way it introduces this information into your sound. So you can come in here and mess with this. This is another one though that I like never touch, but there are options there that if you're maybe tr really trying to preserve a natural feel, this could be something for you. You might not be using it as a, as a pasting method, but they give it to you as a pasting method just to be safe. So, okay, that's those. So those are a little complicated, but I mean, that's what they do. We have clear, delete, trim. So trim will delete everything that's not selected. And then we have the delete part after loop is grayed out because we don't have a loop. But if we did have a loop, this would delete the part after the loop. And it's pretty easy to put a loop down. You can select go to regions and then set loop. There you go. You're able to do alt L. Loops are something I don't use in Edison very much either. So we have uh, besides these click free smooth editing. So whenever you make a selection or cut something, things of that nature, it'll apply a super tiny fade to help avoid clicks. And you can turn that option on and off down here with this icon right here. So that's what this does. Honestly, you're probably never going to really come in here you're probably just gonna go over to this undo button and just work from there. So I wouldn't worry about it, but now you know that those tools exist. So next up we have these here snap settings. You see I added a couple regions so that we can use some of this. And what it is, is we are able to snap to the grid and that's the one you're probably gonna be using the most. You have the ability to snap to a pitch period to zero crossing samples and regions. I mean, the one that you'd probably use the most besides snap to grid is zero crossing. And what zero crossing does is it finds the point where the sample crosses zero, as you see, and it will select that point. So if I were to double click and drag, if it would let me double click and drag, there we go. 
Oh, I need to hold down Alt. So this brings us to our other thing. We have a snap setting down here. And this snap setting will force me to snap to the grid. And so what this, this can be useful. And that's what this setting up here is. Snap to grid. And so as I click and drag right now, I'm not snapping to grid. I'm snapping to the zero crossing. But if I select snap to grid number one, I will snap to the grid. So this changes the way that you just select things. So you're able to select like weird things like the pitch period, which can be kind of a strange concept. But right now it's quantizing to that. And yeah, so the most the most common thing you're probably going to be using is either zero crossing to help avoid sample clicks, which there'll still probably be sample clicks, but it's a lot easier to get rid of them. And often sometimes you won't even have one. And then we also have snap to grid which will, of course, snap to the grid on the background. And this simply toggles your snap setting on or off. Okay, next up we have our selections. We're able to deselect, select a current selection. I'm just gonna let you mess with these. These are so self-explanatory. And we also have our zoom settings, which are also very self-explanatory, but they give you the uh, keyboard shortcuts here. So if you come in here a lot, maybe you'll find that useful. Mostly what I use for zooming is I hold down control and scroll. And that allows me to zoom in and out pretty dynamically on where my mouse is. So if I move my mouse, it'll change the zoom. And if I push my middle mouse wheel down and move, I'm able to scroll the view. Alternatively, I can come down here and click and I'm able to drag out in and out like so. Uh, another couple things. So we have these guys down here. This toggles auto scrolling. So if I am very, this, most of the time I want this off, but if I'm very zoomed in, then auto scrolling can be a nightmare because if I play like it can look cool but when I'm doing editing I probably don't want that and if that turns on by accident that's just a pain so turning that off will make it so it stays on where I was it doesn't follow the thing the playlist the playhead what the keyboard icon does is it allows you to switch between the spectrum view and the waveform view so if I click it I'm able to scroll or not scroll switch between those you see here's the spectrum here's the waveform if I hit s it does the exact same thing. That's what the keyboard icon does. If we come over here, we're able to turn on and off our threshold. We've already looked at this, but to set a threshold, we can click and drag, and you actually see our threshold appears as this green bar. We can turn that on and off by view. You probably want that on because you want to know if you accidentally have that on somewhere. We are able to turn our regions on and off, another setting that you'd probably just leave on. You're able to freeze it, and freezing will keep you from being able to change anything. You can't select, you can't do nothing because it's frozen. And you see it blinks indicating it's frozen if you try to do something. But it's not a very large blinking icon like you might not know and be frustrated. So that's that. That's the smooth editing. We already talked about that. Snapping. And then this is a slide. This works as all points after another point. So let's say this region. All regions after this will move in response to this region. We're sliding them all. And if I turn that off, then I can move them independently between the two. This is very important for when you're working in envelopes. Let's say that I want this whole thing to slide over, which normally I don't. But if I do, I'm able to do that. And if maybe it's a rhythmic thing, I need to keep in time. And if I don't have it on, I'm able to go in between. That's, what, that's how those work. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.